Hello, welcome back. I'm Morris Dimba, and today I'm going to show you how we can create a portal frame in Commerce. Since we have our grid line already in place, and we are picking right from our previous tutorial where I, where I showed you how we can create grid line in Commerce. So, if you take a look on my ribbon here under steel, we have all the tools available under steel, and we have concrete, we have all the tools available under concrete. And analysis, uh, analysis design, we have all the tools available under structural analysis. Now, we, we also have drawings and reports, and that for another day, we'll discuss about that. Today, I'm just I'm going just to show you how we can briefly create a portal frame in Commerce. So, we'll go straight to steel. So, under steel, we have the column, we have the beams, and we have the horizontal, we have the vertical bracing, we have the trusses, piling guards, and curved. All that we'll discuss as we move step by step. Now, let's first of all place our column. I'll click on the column, then place it right there. Right click and walk away from that uh, from that command by clicking interrupt. I'll click on interrupt. Then I'll, I'll zoom closer and have a look at this uh, and this column. Remember to rotate. You, you pick. You zoom into a point of interest, like uh, um, the point of interest is the, at the bottom end of this column. So the moment you, you, you zoom into point of interest, you just left click, and you just right click and hold and move your mouse like that. You'll be able to rotate that particular uh, part. Now, if I double click on this column, the dialog, uh, dialog box for the this column profile will uh, pop up. And this is where I'll be able to modify or feed in the right uh, specifications or the right uh, uh, column size. Now, if you take a look here under uh, under profile name, the, the profile name is is HEA three hundred, and I don't I don't want that particular profile of this column. So the next thing you can see the section of a beam or a column. Just click on that button. So you give it some time to load the whole catalog for the steel profiles and just pull it aside so that you'll be able to see the moment you select the, the appropriate steel column that suits what you need, you'll be able to see the column changes or matches the size or the specification of the column you've just picked. I normally work the, with IPE and remember most of the time when you design, make sure the material you're picking is available locally within your within your country because you can submit this and the the, the steel you've specified are not available locally they have to import and that's a, a, a very uh, big process to find yourself in now i'll come to ipe because ipe is, is locally available so i'll come to ipe let me, let me first of all minimize this i'll come to ipe here and the moment i click i'll click on ipe I have from 80 all the way to 600 size. So I'll pick uh, 400. I'll pick on 400, and the moment you click on 400, we have all the uh, the geometry properties of all the, of the column. We have the profiling, we have the type, we have the families under IPE. We have the the height is is 400. The width is that. Everything, all, all the details are here. So the moment I've, I've picked on the on the right uh, column size under this catalog, I'll go ahead and click select on that. So the moment I click on select on that, you'll be able to see it appears here. You can also just right click and copy and paste or just type the name of that particular uh, profile. So I'll go ahead and click apply and give it an OK. And since now you can see the orientation of this particular column will not allow me to, to fit in or fix or place my, my rafter. So that one I'll, I'll show you later on. So I'll just click on it first of all. And rotate this. So the moment I click on it, I right click and come to rotate here, uh, move special. So to access the, the rotate uh, tool, you come to move special after right clicking, then come to rotate. The moment you click on rotate, I want to rotate this at 90 degrees. We have the angles and the uh, and uh, z, z offsets. All this will will tackle step by step. So for today, I just show you the direct way or a directory on how you can create a portal frame in commerce. Now, under option here, we have we have uh, angle zero, the zero off, uh, the, the z offset is zero. A copy is is grayed off because it's it, it 
that specification we don't need it here so for now i want to define a rotation a point so i'm going to click here on top of this uh column i'll click on that then i'll right click to define a rotation point for this particular column so if i come and feed in here 90 degrees and come and come all the way and click run i'll be able to see my my column rotates at that uh, ab about that about that point uh, uh, i had defined at 90 degrees now if i select it once again right click and come to copy i'll come to copy special copy linear then i want to copy this column at a distance of 15 meters this bay to this bay this uh, this point to this point is 7.5 and this point to this point is 7.5 make it a total of 15 meters now i want to copy this column to that end at 15 meters so i just click at the bottom end here I right click and come to special copy select linear then i'll snap at the bottom end here the moment you see it turning red means the 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 exact the the accurate point has been located so the moment it turns red you see a red point there just click then move all the way to a span of 15 meters and I'll, I'll snap on that spot so the moment i snap on that spot you'll be able to see that measurement has been already displayed here at x axis remember i showed you the x axis defines the is, is defined by red arrow and the, the y axis is defined by a green arrow now i'm going to click copy the moment i click copy button you'll be able to see this uh, this column will be copied on the on the other end so i'll go ahead and click copy and that's it i'll close that now i want to fix or place my rafter first of all let's first of all check the height of this particular beam or, uh, i mean columns i'll double click and this is where you define the height of the column you see at zero level at zero level our column has not uh, gone down by any dimension it flashes at zero zero level so at this level at zero level we don't feed anything and remember since on on our grid line when we were defining the measurements on the grid line if i double click here you you'll see the far end of our column should be six meters and by default if you see if you take a look here if i double click here you can see our column by default it reads uh, it reads five meters so i have to change this to six meters so that it matches uh, the measurements that we defined on, on our on our grid and uh, on, our, on our grid line previously so i'll have to select both columns i'll press control and select this column i'll uh, select on that and double click on this one to bring the dialog box so i'll come here and feed in six meters high so i'll go ahead and click apply and give it an okay this one has changed this one has hasn't changed to con uh, hasn't changed so to confirm that i'll double click on that you'll be able to see it has changed to six meters and this one i haven't seen any any change done so i'll just change it individually i'll just fill in six meters there and click apply and give it an okay now i'm, conf I'm confident that everything has changed to to the specified height of column that we fed on the grid line previously now let me just turn this round you can see we have our columns in, uh, in place along the two bays one two now we want to uh, place our rafter so how do you, how do we do that i'll come to beam and snap right at, at the joint here this is the main joint so i'll zoom out and please take into account that the length from this end to this end is 7.5 meters so i want to place i want to create a rafter with reference to this top end at six meters now just see just begin and take a look of, of what's going to happen i'm going to type i'm going to enter on my on my keyboard and i'll press add then key in the length the length of my re, uh, the length of my rafter which is 7.7.5 uh, then uh, I, I place a comma at absolute zero there then i want my rafter to move up by a meter to define the apex height of my of, of, of my uh, of my rafter so i'll key in uh, a meter there 
then I'll go ahead and enter. So if I right click and click and click interrupt just to walk away from that particular command, I'll click on that particular point just to define my, the point of interest to enable my rotation accurate. So if I turn it like this, you'll be able to see I have my rafter, one, one side of the rafter already in place. And maybe this particular profile member I'm not, I mean, is not the particular profile member I was, I was preferring to, to use. I'll just double click on it. Then uh, the dialog box for this particular member will pop up and I'll be able to change this. So since this was, uh, was 400 IPE, this by default has appeared to be 300. By, uh, by, uh, by good luck, this was the size of, uh, the, of the member that I was interested in. I'll go ahead and click apply and give it an okay right there. So I'll come here and either just come to column and snap on that spot and move all the way to this particular, particular member. And I've, and I've created my, my rafters in place. So what is remaining just placing the haunches? You can see that. I'll, I'll, I'll click on empty screen to deselect it. Now, I want to create the base plate from, uh, from this particular, uh, for the, I want to create the base plate for the columns and I will also show you how we can create uh, the, the haunches at the apex here, apex haunch and uh, the, uh, the haunches at, at the column. I mean, the connection between the column and the rafters. Now, where do we access or where do we get all the tools? We got all the macros that we ha will help us create all those connections and a macro galleries. We have beam to beam connections. We have beam to column connections. We have bracing connections. So if you, if you click this drop down arrows or this arrow, we'll be able to see all the, to all the macros available that will be able to help us in creating all those. So since on the Apex here, we have the beam, beam to beam connection. So we'll go by this Apex connection. I'll click on that. So I'll pick the first member. You can see, you can see the instruction here. Select first beam. I'll select on that beam and uh, select the second beam then the connection will be created. So this is a default connection. So we need to modify this or we need to customize this to match our needs or to match our, our specifications. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select, I'm going to left click on this particular connection. Then I press, uh, then click on, uh, then press M button on my keyboard twice like that. Then I enter to bring the dialog box for this particular macro. So from here, I'll be able to uh, play with the settings to fit what I need. So since I have already defined this previously and I have uh, had saved all my presettings in here, I'll just go ahead and click punch, then click, I'll, I'll select on this because I've saved my, my settings for, for this particular connection. Now I'll go ahead and click load, load the settings. I'll go ahead and click apply and give it an okay. So my hunt, uh, my Apex hunch are already created. So the next I'm going to create the hunts, hunches at the columns end. Now, where do you get them? I'll come to beam to column connections. I'll come to beam to, uh, beam to, beam to column collections. I'll come to hunches there. Then pick on the column, then pick on the on the beam, and I have my haunch in place. So how do we customize this? I select, I'll point my, I'll, I'll, go, I'll select my point of interest. Then left, I mean, then right click and hold and turn your mouse like that so that you'll be able to rotate it to a position you'll be able to see it clearly. So now I want to modify this particular haunch. I'll, I'll select, I'll, I'll select on the haunch. Select by left clicking, then press enter. And that you, you will realize is not bringing the dialog box for the for that particular macro. Or macro. Just go, go ahead and left click on once again and press the M button on your keyboard twice. Just one, two, then go ahead and click and, and, pre, and press enter. This will bring the dialog box for that particular haunch connection. So from here, you'll be able to um, adjust the bolts and adjust the size of the haunch. And since I have already uh, done that and I have the presets for, particular, for, for, for that particular connection, I just click on this drop down arrow and click on that. 
and load that. So, so, so the moment I've done so, I'll go, just go ahead and click apply, and everything will be will be done. Now, first of all, let first of all, first of all, go go back to the first tab. So in here, I want to adjust the length of my hunch. To adjust the length of, of my hunch, I'll use this particular arrow. You can see this arrow. I'll just feed in 1.2 right there, and can go. I can go ahead and click OK, and that's it. And maybe I want to include this setting into into my pres uh, into my preset type of connections. I just select on it, uh, uh, press M twice, then enter. So once the dialog box appears, I want to include this particular setting, this 1.2, into my presets. So I'll come here and select on it and click Save. So the moment I click Save, that will be added into my uh, setting. So if I come this end and pick on this particular hunch, select the column, and select the, the rafter. I have my, my hunch connection created. And one thing we are lacking, the, the changes we, we made have not been effected. So what we are going to do, I'm going to select it once again and press M twice and enter to bring the dialog box so that we can apply the changes we, we had applied on the, other, on the other end. I'll come to macro presets, presets here and click on this drop down arrow and select on that, on that particular con uh, connection that I had customized previously. I'll come here and click load. So the moment I click on load, I'll go ahead and click apply and everything will be will be affected. So you can see we have this in place. So if I if I take a look, if you take a look here, you can see a box here. And these blocks have our visibility. So we want to get do away with this particular box here. So let me just select on it so that it shows our it shows our point of interest so that when I, I right I right click and I right click and hold my left button, my right button, I'll be able to move my mouse. So I want to get rid of this. I'll come to I'll come to cut visibility button here and click on that and that will disappear. So that's how it's done. Now let's go to base plate at the bottom end here. I'll minimize this because I no longer have I no longer have interest in that. Now I'll go back to base plate. I'll come to base plate because I want to place my base plate at the bottom end here. I'll pick on the base plate here, then select the column. And immediately we'll be able to see the base plate appears. This is how you fix it. And if you want to see more details about this, just select the base plate, press M, M button twice, then enter. This will bring the dialog box for this particular macro for the base plate. So in here is, is where you define how the, base, the size of the base plate, how many bolts, how many stiffeners, and which one do you want and how how you can save the exact base plate settings or connection so luckily i had already saved mine so this is what i did and just load it and apply and this is how i, I did it i'll come to base plate on this on this on the other end and apply it here and i have my base plate in place so that's how you can create a portal frame. So you can select everything here, right click and come to special copy and come to linear and I want to populate this along the Y axis. So first of all, let's let first of all have the counts for the base. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and ten. Now I want to populate it from here, from this uh, bottom end here. First of all, let me just mouse over so this, until I see I write snapping point, uh, a red snapping point. So I'll click on that spot and move all the way to this particular point. And this is will be, will be defined at as six meters along Y axis. So how many do we, do we need? We need approximately 10 or nine. I'll go ahead and just increase this, uh, increase the count up to nine. I'll go ahead and click copy. So we'll give it some time to place all, all the all the members in place. So in this particular case, we needed 10. So I'll just go ahead and close this and, and do. So I'll come back and select everything here. Right click and come to special copy and pick linear. So I'll snap at the end here. Just zoom close until you see that that red snap. 
means you are you are on the right intersection. So I'll click on that, then zoom all the all all, all the way and snap at a, a bay at a six meter bay here, and I'll snap on that. And the, the moment you snap on that, you'll be able to see that dimension under y axis. Now I want to enter the number of I want to increase the count of the bays. I'll just increase that to ten. So the moment I, I, I've done so, I'll go ahead and click copy so that we, if we have all this portal frame populated along the Y axis, you can see that we have this in place. So that's how you do it. So the next tutorial, I'll show you how the, the, the shortest way or the shortcuts you can use in creating the connection. And beside that, I'll show you how we can place uh, the guts or the uh, or uh, I mean the guards and the palings and uh, the gable columns on the next tutorial.